go kill her and all my you're buddies on. Like, <laughs> and you're on. And you're on. And you're on. And you're on. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, everyone. It's Kate Richford from BeadShop.com. And if it's Wednesday, it must be Facebook Live Day. And look who I have next to me, someone who's brand new to you guys. Now, this is Tammy Trennan. Say hi to everybody, Tam. Hello, everybody. <laughs> and Tammy Drennan is a member of the Bead Table, our bead, uh, our bead shop group. She's also a very um, accomplished jewelry designer in her own right. And so Thank I thought, you. well, you're welcome. You know, I thought while Emily was away, I didn't want the seat beside me to be empty the whole time. You shouldn't have to be yeah, solo. So I didn't have to go solo. So last week we had the wonderful um, Sarah Oler from Softflex. And this week, in the co-pilot seat, we've got Tammy. And I nice thought, to be here. Yeah, it's great to have you. And, you know, I thought it would be really fun because this is, with this Viking knit, it's really um, a class. It's a class. It's a class that I taught um, for years and years. I started teaching this class probably almost, I don't know, 20 years ago. Um, and it was a real, um, I don't know, staple in my class repertoire. So I thought, who better to... Uh, to teach than to have someone who has actually never done this before. Never before. So thank you for your bravery. Not a and problem. And thanks for joining me. It's great Fingers to have crossed you. Fingers crossed I make it through. I'm oh, good. I know you can. Well, let's see. I'm going to pull up our broadcast, you guys. As usual, Brendan is behind the camera, and we've got Janice doing some moderating. And, of course, we've got our lovely Gita, um, who is linking things as well on the other side as beadshop.com. So, um... Let me see if I can find us here. How are we doing over there, Brandon? We're doing great. And we're up. I just need to find. I can't. We're I can't getting, see you. I we're can't getting see lots you. of your comments. <laughs> Art was the first one to say hello. Oh, and, uh, it's Kimberly nice. saying that she loves your amazing new piece. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah. Okay. Here we are. Great. Yeah. So we're 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 definitely out there. Your okay, mother we're is on. saying hello oh, my to mama. both of you. Great. Everyone's Quinn. here. Well, um, so Tam, you have while well, everyone hops on and stuff. Let's. A little bit about you, okay? Let's share. Let's share some of your. <laughs> let's share some of your journey. Now, those of you who are watching, who are members of the Bead Table group, um, our Facebook group for BeadShop.com, will recognize the piece, Tam, that you're wearing. Yes, that was a piece that was um, sort of quasi inspired by our fun with vintage finds. Yes, but you took it definitely. even further. It's really a great piece. Thank you. And I'm wearing another one of Tammy's creations here. That was, was supposed to be the tassel. Yeah, the message in a bottle. Yes. kind of feel to it but I think you've taken it even further you've kind of mixed a little bit of a Tahoe, Tahoe. vibe and some really that printed leather with a with a silk wrap you've taken it even further which I love so thanks for letting me borrow your piece Not to wear on air it's awesome so Tam you have um, been how long have you been making jewelry if I may ask. Well, I, I've loved jewelry all my life, but I really... use my skinny microphone. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, I really started making jewelry a lot when I moved to the Bay Area, mm -hmm. probably in the early 90s, mm -hmm. is when I started really exploring it and making jewelry. And so what was the first kind of jewelry that you made? It was a lot of just the strung pieces, like similar to what I'm right, wearing like right now. Soft flex plus beads equals necklace yes. kind of thing. Yes. Yeah. I started with thread actually. Thread? I didn't know that Even I could better. do. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know that I could use I was really new and it was before you know the Facebook lives like mm -hmm. you do right now mm -hmm. where you were kind of on your own learning. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Did you string on dental floss? Uh, I didn't do okay. that. Okay. I did not do that. My mom likes to tell people that she still sometimes strings necklaces on <laughs> dental floss. I'm just surprised to, I didn't. Just but. to tell people, you know. But but so but so, I did string on thread, and that's before I knew you could use needles. Yeah. Because yeah. I went to a bead shop, and they said, do you need more needles for that? And I said, you have needles? <laughs> Is that what I would have been doing it by hand with <laughs> right. the small beads and everything. Oh, so, yes. And so then what was your next foray? Where did you go from there? Well, then I just dis discovered wire. Yes. I love wire. So I was doing a lot of wire wrapping, cabochons mm -hmm. and, and focal stones and things like that. Um, and then I started doing wire crochet, which you are very I known love wire for. Crochet. Your wire crochet is amazing. And Thank you. when we do some wire crochet, I know I'm going to do it. Maybe we should just have you back Ooh. to do wire crochet. I would with love Emily. that. That'd I would love that. You're really great. Your wire Thank crochet you. is beautiful. Well, my grandma taught me how to crochet when mm -hmm. I was probably four, mm -hmm. with not with wire, with mm -hmm. yarn. 
and one day I was in this in my studio and the wire was there and I had been crocheting scarves and my crochet hook was there and I thought I wonder if I can crochet yeah. with wire and I just started doing it and it it really is kind of soothing yeah to me so and I think it really gives and this is the kind of technique that we're doing today with the Viking knit it has it reads a little in a similar vein of wire crochet in that we're kind of weaving wire so it's kind of open and stuff so I'm sure you will take to it like I'm excited to learn it to water. for sure it's going to be fun and so now you're doing you um, sell your jewelry yes I do and people can find you on Instagram yes. and on Facebook where can they find you uh, Damiana Designs okay. is my business it's name. your business name and I'm on Facebook uh, as Damiana Designs and on Instagram oh as that's well. great and we'll link that in our episode notes and people are already hoping that maybe you'll let Karen photograph these for the episode notes oh sure for that what are you wearing segment sure and we'll, we'll show these a little more at the end of the broadcast so you guys can see them up close and personal but they're really really beautiful so I'm very stoked to be able to wear one oh, today I'm glad so you did. thank you I'm thank glad you, I brought thank it you. Well, it's great to have everybody. Look, everyone's here. Everyone is saying hey and hello, and it's it's the old home week, it feels like, here on Facebook. Um, so I'm going to jump in, and Emily's on. Hi, Em. Hi, we Emily. miss you, but we hope you're making great I'm progress. I'm just keeping your seat warm yeah. while you're gone. <laughs> you're making great progress with your move. Um, so let's, uh, let's jump in. We're going to talk a little bit about the process and the technique of this piece. A little bit about kind of the, um, I don't know, the history of how I've been doing this. And then we'll jump into the technique. Okay. Um, so wire, uh, what do I want to say? Wire weaving, Viking knit. This was really, I was inspired to make this, and I'm wearing an old, old one that, um, I, that one. That's so I have pretty. on my wrist here. And my mom, she's so funny, she sent me a photo of one that I made her years and years ago, and I'll go ahead and link that also, you guys, in the episode notes. Um, but for many years, and those of you who have watched know how much I love vintage jewelry, well, I also love vintage um, tribal jewelry, and I have a pretty good tribal um, collection. And I was always fascinated by the old chains that were made, um, kind of the old chains from India, or old chains from kind of um, old Persian jewelry. And I started to kind of research them, and I have one, and I looked at it, and it, Viking knit, this technique kind of came up on my radar. Now, Tam, you were saying earlier that you've seen the Viking knit done with, there's like a little winder tool, yes. right? And you've, I've seen it done like with a little, there's like a little peg tool that you put the pegs around and wrap mm -hmm. the wire around. And I thought, oh my gosh, it's going to be so terribly difficult. So I played around with it a lot and I came up with a really easy way to use dowels. And we're going to, you hardly need any tools at all. Um, but this is an old one. This is, piece is probably about 20 years old. And the gauge of wire, this is an old sterling silver piece. Um, and the gauge of wire that I'm wearing here, this is 22 gauge. We're going to be working with a thinner gauge today. And if you're just jumping into this technique, I would jump in with a thinner gauge with 26. And I'll show you that in a second. And then work your way up to a heavier gauge. Um, and the Viking knit is great. You can make really long pieces, like if you wanted to make a really long necklace and hang something on it, it would look amazing. Or you can just accomplish something in a short sitting by making just a short portion um, and um, makes adding a some other bracelet. Bracelet. Yeah, it makes a great bracelet. And today we're going to probably be making a piece that's even shorter than this. And I'll show you the lengths. There's a kind of a formula that I use to try and figure out what the finish length and stuff is going to be. So I'll share all that with you. But even if you make just a tiny little section like this, which is probably what we're going to end up doing, you'll be able to, I've added some different um, components that you can kind of elongate it to kind of make it just a short section in what will become a very interesting bracelet, I think. So with Viking knit, yeah, and it's really, it's a traditional, um, it's a really traditional um, technique. Um, as I say, you can make it big, 
chunky and heavy like this or a lot lighter and thinner like this. So the world's your oyster. And the thing that I told Tammy when we sat down, we sat down before we broadcasted, and she literally, she has not done this before, which is going to be great. I keep striking fear in your heart. You're like, <laughs> no. no, I haven't done this before. Stop telling them. Um, but this is a, a technique that... Uh, is really forgiving. So if your wire weaving is a little funny or your spacing is a little off, don't worry. I want you to press through um, because we're going to do a little trick at the end that's going to even everything up and make everything look amazing. That's my favorite kind so, of project. Right? So I'm, I'm good. Ever, ever done. <laughs> so, um, okay. Well, if we don't have any more questions um, now, I don't think I do. Let's go ahead, Brent, and move that camera around. Okay. And let's get started. We're going to talk about some of the um, tools and materials that we're using, and then uh, we're gonna we're gonna jump in. Excellent. Okay. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the tools and materials uh, to start off with, and you guys can see. I also want to mention. You guys, of course, you can find all of the ingredients for both of these projects on our website, beadshop.com. And we have two under the Viking knit. We've got the Astrid and Ingrid, which I love those names. Janice named those. Um, I think they are fun, uh, fun names for them. And you can go right to our homepage on beadshop.com. You click on either the big slider that comes up in front or on the Facebook Live um, little uh, link up at the top bar. And if you click on Viking Knit, you'll see the two projects, Astrid, which is the copper one, and Ingrid, which is the rose gold and silver. And if you click on one of those, your uh, materials list and ingredients list will show right up as, as well as a project map so you can see the piece laid out. And then after the fact, of course, I know some of you uh, really use the episode notes quite a bit, but on Monday you'll see those episode notes posted with more of the um, wrap-up from the broadcast. So um, they are uh, they're ready, ready to go. Uh, for you guys to peruse. So let's um, jump in and I'll talk to you a little bit about the materials we're going to use. So Tam, what's the wire that you use mostly in your work for wire wrapping? What would you say? Oh, for wire wrapping? Yeah. Because I know 20, in my crochet I use 20 26 for yeah. crocheting, yeah. And my like, wire wrapping I use maybe 20, 22. 22, mm -hmm. yeah, so heavier gauges. But exactly, I use the same that you use in your bead crochet for this base. We're going to start out with 26 gauge. Okay. Because it's super malleable. Um, and we've just added some new wire to our product line. And... We um, have got some new pair of wire, and it's just fantastic. I love the quality of the wire. I love the color of the wire. And so we've got it in this non-tarnished rose gold, and we're going to be weaving. You're actually going to be using the, rose, the rose gold, gold today, yes. yeah, in the 26. And then this one here, I used the non-tarnished copper, um, and the non-tarnished copper is right here, and I used the 26 gauge there. We also have, you guys, the 26 gauge in a bare copper with no non-tarnish coating. And I think that's actually what I'm weaving with here um, because we're going to talk about there's going to be an extension of this free tip Friday, or of this Facebook Live. On Friday, I'm going to talk to you all about how to utilize liver of sulfur. I love a good patina. Right? I do too. <laughs> and so um, I'm going to teach you how to antique. But the cool thing about this non-tarnished copper and this non-tarnished rose gold is that it doesn't tarnish. So if you do want something that is able to be antiqued, like the bracelet that I have on here, this was sterling that I made it out of and then I antiqued it with a liver of sulfur later, you're going to need to use a bare wire that bare has wire. no coating on it. So this will table this until, until Friday. Um, but I have some, you know, you can mix, the, as I said to Tammy earlier, you can mix anything. The world really 
is your Viking Knit Oyster, right? We can add beads, we can do all kinds of stuff with this. But for my closure, what I chose to use, and it's kind of a Kate classic with this Viking Knit, we brought this, where's my awl? I can't do anything without Emily's awl. Here we go. We brought this bead cap back. I love and that big cap. I, That's so pretty. I just love it. And we have it actually in two sizes. We have a, a big one. It's called Hold Me, and it's in large. And this is Hold Me in small. And the um, this fits just perfectly um, right over your Viking knit for this. And if you make a Viking knit that's bigger or chunkier, like I have started here with this one, you can use the larger bead large. cap as well. Mm -hmm. That's a great so, tassel topper, too. I it love would it be that. a great tassel mm -hmm. topper. And I bet, you know, let's, um, hey, well, Brandwin, you're up. Would you yeah. grab, <laughs> Brandwin's up. Would you grab the Hold Me in large yes. for everybody to see? We might as well throw one of those down, too, while I keep chatting about this. And some of you may have seen um, this swivel lobster claw. Now, um, one of our bead table members, Allie, made a really beautiful wrap and um, similar to what we did, thanks Brand, with the, um, with the um, prairie wrap that we okay. used, that C-clasp. But she uh, didn't use the C-clasp, but she wanted to use a regular closer, closure. So she used these with our um, leather loop closures that we're actually getting back in. You guys love them so much that um, currently I believe they are out, but they'll be coming back in very soon. Um, but the thing I love about this lobster claw is that it swivels around. Yeah, that's a great feature. Right, and it since, makes it so much easier. Yeah, to clasp. to clasp. And since this is kind of a rigid, it's not that rigid, but it's rigid-ish, right? But it does allow you to have that clasp go around anywhere you'd like mm -hmm. it. So I you like can that. see that this closure, the bead cap, is there. I've just done a wire wrap here, and my um, lobster claw just comes in and. Uh, connects right to that loop. On this one that's the silver, I love the contrast. I wanted to mm -hmm. do mixed metals. I just, this rose gold is just slaying me. I did the closure, the little loop, a little bit differently and I did a doubled over. So, oh, okay. to make it look like it was kind of an ending, you know? So that goes through just like that. And then on this one, since I did this one a little bit later than the first one, and I was, of course, always pressed for time. This piece was a little shorter than this copper one. So instead of fretting about it, all I did was, instead of putting my um, mini hoops, I could still slide these you mini can hoops. Still put them on yeah, there, yeah, put them on there. I used them as a wire wrap connection, and then I put a mini hoop, and then I put one of our barrel beads I love there. That bead too. So this could be anything. Mm -hmm. This could be a piece of chain, beads or yeah, beads, whatever. And if you wanted this to be a multiple wrap, you guys, you could come in and add, like I could add a link of chain here I'll to this you. end and so there. I could wrap it around twice. And then I could close it up, you know, with a wire wrap on here. So I thought that this um, keyholes chain that we carry would make a great companion if you wanted to make it multiple strand. Or if you wanted to do a necklace and this came on down. Let's, let me pull these off. That could off. be your focal center. Right, it could. Right, so this guy could go here. I don't know, maybe here you'd wire wrap it. And then you could have this come up and it could be two-sided or whatever. Or we could even, Tam, we could put your, like the tassel here, we could do a tassel or something oh, from definitely. that rather than a charm. So there's a lot that you can do with just this simple base chain. So um, I really want you guys to be super creative um, to see what you come up with. The um, the um, caps. Those are beautiful together. Yeah, too. don't they? I'm, I'm they do. kind of digging it. I love it. I pulled some other caps. Now Brandwin got the hold me in the large here, and I wanted to show you these guys. So Aren't pretty. they substantial? And they I love would the make texture a great on them. The texture that makes hammer it texture. Look I so agree. Old. Yeah, I like my jewelry to look like I dug it up in an archaeological mm -hmm. dig. You know, I like that look. So these would be great if you're making, as I say, making chain that's a little bit bigger or as a tassel top. 
We also have these cones. They're uh, called the Perfect Cone, I think. Um, let me pull it up here. And that one is also the cutest cone. That's what it's called, not perfect cone. Um, cutest cone would also fit. Do I have a little? There's my little piece. Would also fit on the end of this here. So either or. And this would also, if you're turning this into an earring or something like oh, that. Oh, yeah. And I like the change really in shape nice. there. Mm -hmm, I do. I like the taper a lot. Mm -hmm. And then you could still use our toggle, our, our um, swivel lobster claw. We're getting these in a smaller size as well, so those okay. will be up in just a couple of weeks. And then we also have our capped off um, end cap. We have them in a couple of different sizes. Those are the ones I have. I don't know how many I have of those. Yeah, at home. I love those for a tassel. so well. This is a little, just the tiniest bit big for this diameter, but if you're making a chain with a smaller dowel and making a really thin one, mm -hmm. this would be a beautiful cap for that. Mm -hmm. So, Gita says cutest cone. Cutest cone, yes, <laughs> cutest cone. Cutest cone, because it is, it's the cutest cone ever. And I really like mixing my metals, you know, if you guys know how I work, and I know, Tim, with your pieces too, you're not I shy do. about mixing metals. I think that mixed metals really... I don't know. Janice always says that, you know, it adds a little bit of flair or a little bit of expensive look, I think, you know, when you do some kind of intentional mixed metals. Um, I've always been a fan of it. When I was, when I started out, I was more of a purist. I only used sterling. Mm -hmm. And then when we spent more time in Arizona, I fell in love with copper. Mm -hmm. And now I've really embraced brass. Yeah. And so I mix them all together, mix them all and I up. think it looks beautiful. Yeah, I really do, too. And I'm really digging this rose gold. It's not quite copper. It's not quite gold. I just think That's it's That's beautiful. Gorge. I hadn't seen it in person yeah. before, and I'm not a gold. I don't wear a lot of gold, mm -hmm. but that is a beautiful. It's really a great color. It's like I a think. softer copper. Yeah, or it is. It's a softer copper. It is. The friendlier copper. Yes. The kinder, gentler copper. Uh, copper. All right, well, let's get, let me get back to here, and let's get started on the actual, um, the actual technique. So let me see. Uh, people have been asking me about the diameter. I'm going to, um, I'm going to grab, Bran, I'm going to ask you to grab it. I think it's on my desk. The digital caliper we okay. need, and let me digital caliper that. And don't worry, you guys, I'm going to show you how to finish it. It'll all be in good good time so don't you worry um i i'm gonna cover it all so thanks Brian, for grabbing that so you know with our digital caliper um let me first um measure the inside diameter it should be in the description but the, it's about a 5.5 millimeter inside diameter in this cone so it should directly translate Yep, this is about a 5.5 millimeter diameter in my chain, okay, okay. with this particular one. So, um, but, but the cool thing about this is we're going to use the draw plate a little bit later so you can customize the um, diameter of the chain that you're going to be making. Now, I know with my wire crochet, mm -hmm. I can kind of squish it in at the end, too, mm -hmm. to make it fit into my cones. Right. Would you be able to do, if it was a little bit larger at yeah, the end, could you... Yeah, it can taper a little taper bit. Taper it a little and bit. I'll show you a little bit when we close it, because you can, this is still fairly malleable after okay. you make the Viking knit, so you can kind of smush, that technical smush. term, yes, right, to kind of make it, make it fit where you want it to fit. So, um, so let's jump in and get started. So, um... The, the main thing that I want you to remember is, like I said earlier, this is a really forgiving technique. So don't sweat it if all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, this looks terrible. Oh my gosh, I'm never, I'm never going to finish this. Or, oh my gosh, it's going to be terrible when it, you know, it's all uneven. Trust me, you need to practice on one. Once you get through your first Viking knit, then you, you're going to be home free. So 
tr I know you've trusted me on a lot of things. I want you to keep trusting me on this I one. I trust you. Okay. Kate. All right. Thanks, Tammy. <laughs> It's nice to know, too, that this, if you just start out saying, this is just my practice. Right, it, it is. It takes a lot of pressure yeah. off to make it perfect, yeah. and it becomes a learning it does. opportunity. And, you know, as you weave this chain, you'll be able to cut away anything that, like my friend Mary says, that looks like the dog's breakfast. You can be able just to use the part that is, is really pretty and usable. So we're going to start out with a, um, with a piece of cardboard like this okay and um i don't know you're asking me how how wide is the piece of cardboard it's about two inches okay and i'm going to start um with this 26 gauge and like i mentioned earlier we're going to start with this 26 gauge because it's easy to weave it'll be easy on your hands and then you can just advance yourself into heavier gauges as you get more confident with the technique but I'm going to start, and the beginning technique that I do here is I have a long or a shortish tail, and I'm going to wrap my wire kind of loosely, not too loose, not too tight, around this piece of cardboard. Okay? And I'm going to wrap it one, two, three, four, five times. Okay? And I'm going to slide it off the cardboard so I have five even little wraps now this is kind of important you want one end of this of these wraps to be fairly even so I just kind of tap it with my finger and make sure they're even then I get this long the short piece here and I wrap it around capturing this piece see how I'm still working off the spool you can also cut your wire at this point but I'm going to wrap, wrap, wrap till I have a little bundle. The, the height of these on this side, that doesn't matter, but on this long side, see how I have about a one-third to two-thirds ratio here. Then I'm going to kind of reel off maybe about, I don't know, two yards, a yard and a half, whatever you're comfortable with working with, okay? So it's really easy to add wire later, you guys. So don't stress about, um, about adding. And I know, Tam, that you're like, I don't want to add wire. <laughs> I, I like hate adding add. things. But don't worry, it's going to be a breeze, I promise. So the whole key to making this super easy here is we're going to make a little daisy component. And see those little petals? I'm pulling these petals out and forming a daisy like that. And when Tammy was making hers before the show, she was asking me, well, what if they're twisted or if they're laying on top of each other? It doesn't really matter. Try and make them as even as you can get, though, okay? And the number of daisies, you guys, or the number of petals in the daisy directly relates to the number of weaves that you're going to make. Okay, so if we count all the way around, I have six weaves. I think there's six. One, two, three, four. Let me look at it this way. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, yeah, I've got six. So I started with six daisy petals. What Tammy did was, as she was winding, she got so excited that she wound seven. I know. Right? I followed directions so well already. <laughs> right? You're like, I just used seven. I'm like, I already messed it right? up. Right? So seven is great, too. So whatever you start with, but five is a good starting point. And notice, you guys, I have here a bunch of dowels. And this is going to be the base of our weave. So you can see, I'm going to grab yours here, yep. Tam, that you've already started on. I have a half-inch dowel here. We've got a 7 sixteenths inch dowel. I have a 3 eighths inch dowel. I know that you guys are furiously taking notes, or if, if you are, you don't need to worry about it. Or a 5 sixteenths here. 
find whatever dowel you have at home and work with it. And you can just get right? these at the hardware yeah, store. Yeah, get them at the hardware right? store or at the craft store. Um, okay. You can cut them yourself or you can get them in little 12 inch. I cut these down to like 10 inches. The ones that I'm working with are even shorter. They're six inches because when you go on a plane, if the tool that you're carrying on is less than seven inches, you can carry on like, you know, if oh. you have like a plier or something. So this is really great to travel with. So oh, that's a good idea. Cut off your little dowel. I mean, you could do this on a dowel that's even super short like this. doesn't matter. But this is a great travel technique because you don't really need a specialty tool, right? So, um, so whatever dowel, you know, whatever works for you. This heavy one I used uh, with this is 22 gauge wire that I was working with here. I used the half inch dowel. Tam, since you had seven petals here, <laughs> you also, you said, I'm going to go a little larger. So you grab yes. the half inch. So it doesn't make any difference, really. What does make a difference is the number of petals that you use. So if I've got five little petals here, right, five little petals, and they're not very even, but that's okay. The little bridge of wire that goes between them, that's what makes your weave more kind of elongated or shorter, if that makes sense. So if I had, let's say, like seven petals, one, two, three, four, five, or six petals, there we go, the distance between those petals as I weave are shorter. So the, the weave is going to be tighter. denser and okay. tighter. So fewer petals, your weave is going to be a little more not open, but it'll be a little looser. And the more petals you do, the weave is going to be tighter. So let's say that you wanted a really heavy chain, but you want it to be fairly thin. You could use a small dowel like this 5 16 but put like seven petals. Do a seven petal daisy oh, okay. around this. So you hardly have any space between as you're wrapping. Okay. okay. Could you use a short knitting needle? You know, I find that knitting needles don't work that well, Krista. It looks like um, that's a question that you had. I need something, unless your knitting needles are wood, um, but a metal dowel or a metal rod for this is too slidey. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but hunting down dowels is pretty simple, not too bad. Um, but this is perfect. Jackie, you said you're going to be traveling again in June. This is perfect for travel because all you need is a pair of wire cutters, really, and some wire and your dowel. It's really, really easy. Um, there's another question. Mimi asked, have I ever woven little beads into the knit? Um, I have, but it's a different style than what I'm going to do today. So this Viking knit, because the way that we finished this out, if I had beads in here, it would, it would be a different technique. It wouldn't be what I'm doing today. So you could, you could, you could. Um, and let's see. Um, Let's see, what's this? Anything else? Okay, great. Oh, Emily so, said she mm -hmm. hates following directions. Yeah, she too. does. So, <laughs> yeah, that's great. I try, Emily. I just can't. <laughs> yeah. So let's move. I'm going to move all these dowels to the side. Get those out of your way. And you can see I have, actually, I'm going to steal one of those. Let me steal the seven eighths. Seven that one. Sixteenths. Seven sixteenths. Yeah, that's it. Let me clear the decks here and get all of this, okay? <clears throat> so, and I'm seeing everybody asking about the different things. What you really want, you guys, and I'll say this again, you want your base to be super smooth and round. So if you have something at home that's super smooth, round, and wooden, but round all the way, not, you know, not with edges or anything, you could probably use it. Like so a wooden experiment. spoon, maybe? Maybe like on the handle? end. Maybe. But you kind of want I was it to trying be to think flat of anything else rather than home. curved. Right. So, um, mm. but see what you can do. But you guys, seriously, dowels aren't that hard to find. <laughs> so, trust me. So, now what we're going to do is I've spread out the um, little petals here on my wire. And this is how we start this thing. So, what you could do, and what I have on the one that I have prepared for you, I made little marks equidistant-ish on my dowel with my pencil. And you can do this or, or not. 
I'm going to make these little marks at the top and then I'll show you here what I've got. But you could draw little lines. You could measure out your dowel and draw little lines with your pencil so you have something to aim for when you bend your little daisies down. Now what Tam, I just told Tammy, I said, Tam, just do it and eyeball it. And yours look great. They're nice and even around here. That's or even because I had too many, so right? I just need to eyeball you just, it. You just eyeballed it. Yeah. And this, the way you lay these daisy petals down over your dowel, and you can see, see here I'm just bending them down. And I'm going to get, will you hand me a little piece of painter's tape there, Tam? Mm -hmm. I'm going to get some painter's tape. This is like room class. Right, I know, right? And I'm going to tape my tape down, but I'm not going to tape it all the way. Or wrap it all the way. And before I make some final decisions, I'm going to even everything out. Okay? So I'm going to just kind of come in and just kind of, you know, put that one into place and then slide on over. You can thin them up a little bit if you want. They don't have to be super wide. Right? Bring this guy over a little bit. And the painter's tape isn't so sticky that it's going to be hard for you to kind of move it around. So just use your chain nose and tell everybody where to sit. So once you've kind of got that, then I'm going to really wrap this painter's tape and I'm going to kind of smoosh it around here. Okay, And my long piece of wire, can you see my long piece of wire is still coming out here? Now I'll really look at this and if I have to move things around a little bit more I could and maybe I'll use the awl. So see I've got a little bit of space there so I'll move that over and that space looks good. This space is a little wide so let me just push it over with my fingernail to kind of tell it where to go. And this guy, see those guys are touching. We don't want them to touch if they, if there's room for them to kind of move around. Okay, and that's really about it. So you can see, eh, this space is a little wide. Let me move everything over. Don't stress. I know so far this has been pretty, I shouldn't say this, yeah. I'm not going to So right. far this has been pretty yeah, easy. Yeah, pretty easy. The hardest part is this. Yeah. Once you've got this... And I nailed that one. Right? You nailed it. <laughs> you nailed it. So um, once you've got this and like the first couple of rows done, you are in good shape. Okay. So here's this. And um, we're all set. So now once you've got your five loops done, I don't like this space here. I'm going to move it over a little bit more. There we go. Once you've got your five loops ready to go, and I've got this one ready to go here. They're both the same. I could keep going on that one. The first row is different than every other row you're going to do. Okay. okay. So see how this long wire is coming out from the top of your bundle, right? And it's coming out over your tape here. Yes. Choose a pedal, any pedal doesn't make any difference. Okay. And what we're going to do is we always, I'm right-handed, so I am weaving from the right to the left. Okay? So I'm going to the right. I'm inserting the end of my wire inside that loop. Okay. From the right to the left. Now, I want this wire to form and see how I have my thumb there kind of on the intersection where it is you guys as I'm pulling my wire around what it's going to do is it's going to make like a little a little loop and the loop might be slightly tilted because it's the first one but you're just making going through from the right to the left and making it go like a little roller coaster up and around. Okay? Yep, and I'm going to do it again. Okay, I did it wrong already. Okay. So, so that's okay. So let's show what you've done. So see how Tam just went for it and just put it through the first one. 
Yes. That's fine too. If that happens, that's okay. We're going to go to the second one. Let's cut, cut some of this ridiculously <laughs> long wire off. That's just obnoxious. I thought it was a no. Yeah, no. All right, there we go. We'll add it later. That was really long wire. So see how we're here. I want you to, Tim, I want you to poke it through. Go ahead and pull on this. Whoops, try not to get it caught in your dowel. Pull on that wire right there. Okay. If it was longer, it wouldn't be caught on the dowel. All right. So now, at this point, as it starts to get small, Okay. go ahead and put your thumb right there. Okay. And... You're going to kind of keep pulling the wire, but your thumb will make it have that loop. Okay, great. Like now that? move your thumb and let's show everybody. Yep, yeah, see? There's your loop. Okay. And now you're going to come around, and you're going to do that same thing in that part. So I'm going left to right, it looks like. From, the right, from your right hand to the left, and then around. Oh, okay. So you insert your I wire gotcha. from the right... From my dominant hand side. Yes. Through the loop. And now for this one, see how it's going to come. The wire naturally, see, wants to make a bend. So I let it make a bend, let it make a bend. As it gets smaller, that's when I put my thumb where I want that loop to sit, pull the wire underneath so it kind of glides under my thumb, and pull it back around. And I know what you're thinking. You're like, do these loops have to be the same size? No, they don't. Okay, I like that. They have to be kind of close. What do you need, Bryn? I just t turn just a little bit. Just tell me where to turn. It's more towards, towards you? the angle. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's perfect. So people can really get a good look at that. Okay. Thank you, Kate. Okay. That's so now we're going to do our next... Yeah, perfect. Okay. Great. So now we're going to do it again. Go in from, from the right to the left, through that loop. And this is the only... Um, now you're wishing you had done five petals, I know. right? <laughs> uh, this is the only um, step that's like this. Everything else is even easier. So see, you just want it to curl around, make that little loop-de-loop. -loop. I'm going to put my thumb on there to kind of push it down. Then I've got my little petal go from the right into the left. Come around. Kind of put your thumb where you want that loop to sit. And I'm coming on the home stretch. Okay. And I'm going to go underneath that pedal and see how I've got that loop. And I really, to really make it sit nice and evenly, that's when I put my thumb on, I kind of pull everything, and I give it kind of a, a, a tug there. So now my last, so now I'm back to where I've begun. Can you see that? Okay. So I'm going to come in. <clears throat> and on the second round, all I need to do, see where that loop makes a little X down there? Can you see that? All I'm going to do is slide my wire underneath that X and pull. And that's what's going to hold my loop. So see that there? And around. And so now I'm going to do that round. So you slide it just below the loop, really. How okay. are you doing? You doing alright? I'm, I'm still finishing my petals. Okay, but, so I but you got it. it. Yes, I all got right. it. And when you're, when you're ready to start your second round, let me know and we'll stop and we'll show everybody again. Everybody do five petals. Yep, five <laughs> petals. And I'm going to make, so each of these, as I go around, um, I go around, I'm going to yeah. make about four rows like this. Emily wants to know if you normally work this way top down or bottom up. No, top, top down That's how I do it. So I'm working from up here and down. Okay, now this is the one where I went sideways. Do I go through that one okay. again? Okay, so... Right, so this is where, um, and thanks you guys, we are looking, I'm seeing that you guys are chatting about the camera angle. We are looking at switching up our camera angles as well, so we're doing our very best for you here. So bear with us, but we're, we'll be making sure you guys can see every moment. So see, here's where Tammy went through that loop 
instead of making that loop here. So she's just going to ignore that wire that's going in there, and you're just going to come in. And act like I hadn't yeah, done it. Yeah, act like it never happened. I can All do right. that. So now you're ready to do your second. I am. Your second row. And it's a little easier to see on yours. Okay. See, you guys, it's right. See where I'm putting the all right there? So you're just going to come in. That wire just slides under that X of the, of the loop. Still going in the same direction. Mm -hmm, same direction. So go okay. ahead and pull that sucker through. So when we have the loop, <coughs> and here's our loops going here. Okay. That wire, as you weave it, comes around and it goes behind the X of the loop before it and then around. Okay? So I'm going to keep going. Now if your wire gets a little funny, gets a little bendy, right? I'm just going to use my wire straightening tool. This wire is also ridiculously long. Let me get, let's, what was I thinking for camera? There we go. Get rid of that. So I'm going to come in, <laughs> I'm going to straighten this out, okay? Now again, there's that little X, and see how I just bring it through, let that loop, just the wire wants to loop you guys, and this is the kicker to making a really even nice weave is, before it's real tight, I put my thumb on it, and then I do that little pull, okay? So I'm going to go underneath the X and around. How are you doing? I'm are doing you tangled, good. Tam? Just tangled on my necklace. Right. But I'm, this is uh, easier than you thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, easier than you thought. And it looks, it looks, the finished product looks very intricate. Yeah. Which I love. And this is really not. It. Yeah, it's not. So see what I've got here, you guys? I want to show you. I'm kind of wide here, right? All of these are a little closer. My width is a little off. So if I can, I'm going to try and move, move that link over just, oops, just a little. Because I want to try, if I can establish the weave early at the beginning, pretty even, then, um, then things will be a little bit better towards as you as you move forward. I'm all caught up. Yeah, see, look at that as I was fixing stuff. So now I'm on my I'm gonna go around to my third row. Can you see this is where I've started? See how there's a little Do you want to show mine? space. If it's bigger. I don't know. Is it? Good? I think I'm okay. Okay. See how there's that little space between that last row that I did and the first row. So this is where you just need to aim your wire in that little space behind the X and it pulls out. You'll see this a lot better on the second one that I do. So there's that little ladder and I'm going right between the tines of the ladder, the, the steps of the ladder, through that step Oh, okay. And out through the step opposite. Okay? And loop it round. <clears throat> so I'm going to keep going. And sometimes the end of your wire gets a little scrunchy. Use your wire straightening plier to kind of do that. Yeah, great, Mary. We talked about drawing the, the pencil lines down at the beginning. That really also helps as well. Um, that's a method that I do a lot, um, is I draw lines down my dowel. You can kind of see them here underneath. But lines also help you stay on the straight and narrow. But I'll be honest, you guys, if your wire is a little uneven, don't worry. Just wait till we pull this through. No, I just want to make sure I'm uh -huh. in the right spot yep. before I pull it through. Yeah, right? that's exactly right. Okay. Yep. 
So see, it will be a little bit easier for you to see. So here's that step, that little ladder step, and I go in that ladder step and out the ladder step that's just opposite. And if it's a little tight, just move the wire around. You want to keep the wire really um, fairly loose, right? You want your tension to be even, okay? But we don't want to wrap around this dowel so tightly that we're not going to be able to remove the wire, okay? So don't make it hug the dowel too much. Use the dowel as your kind of support, but not to really shape it, okay? So I'm going to keep going. I'm going to do one more so I have a total of four, um, of four rows here. And what we're doing here is called a Viking knit single weave, okay? But we're going to, and if you just kept going on like this, it would look great. It would look a little uh, more open, not quite as dense. But the piece, pieces that I've been making are Viking knit double weave. And I'm going to show you how that works in just a second. See that motion that I'm doing as I go through the step, you know, in the little ladder step and under the loop and back out. I pull it pretty, pretty tightly. If you need help, use your chain nose pliers to help you pull it. But see how I really deliberately bring it around to make that nice tight curve. That's the thing, okay? And I'm gonna come around. The shape really shows up after the first row or so. Mm -hmm. really and I'm gonna it. bring it. Okay. Some of the hard to see problems, yeah. just the, the contrast is yeah. very great. So Bran, why don't we do this? I'm going to, um, why don't I, why don't you hand me the good old camera from over here? Or maybe I can hold it up right over the top. Yeah, but let's have, let's see if we can do it from my angle. So you guys, we're going to have a little bit of a camera switch around. So let's see if I can get my hands right in front of this here. Let's just up the let's see how it looks. a little bit more. And I want to see how it looks on the screen. So I can see what I've got here, or Bran, if you want to turn the, the the thing towards me just real quick. Am I in the? You are. You are in I? there. Okay. You're perfect. It's okay. Perfectly on you. Let's see here. It's coming. It's coming. I see it coming around. I've got it right on your hand. Okay, perfect. I just want to see where I'm staying. I don't know if that where I'm in. But okay, great. Yeah. So, if you guys can see here, see how there's my little step. I'm going to go behind my weave and again if it gets a little hard to grab I grab it with my chain nose and I help my that helps me pull it around okay so now that I have four rows established okay and again you can just keep going around going around and this would be a single okay but now we're going to go to a double, and that's what makes things more dense, okay? So I'm going to count, and if you can see this little step, okay? See this little... I'm all caught up. You're all caught up. See how fast you are, Tam? And this we'll take pretty. a look at yours. Yeah. See how we've just been weaving through... Can you see that? We've just been weaving through there. That's our wire path. Okay, instead of going here, I'm going to pop up one, let me open it up a little bit, is that a little better? Yeah, that is a little better. Okay, I'm going to go through the second oh, so step up. The one above mm -hmm. it. So if you can see, see how this just comes around, and it just lies below. So just, just don't freak out, you guys. Just watch me here. See, I go in the second step, out the second step. It comes around. And see, it just makes a little stair, another little ladder. So when I come back around, I'm just going to go. We're going now two steps up instead of one. So let's take a look at yours real quick, Tam, before 
before you, you start. before you start. So Tammy's working with hers. She has a seven, seven petals, <laughs> right? Because she's ambitious. Yeah. And notice how the difference between, even though I have a smaller dowel, notice how Tammy's are a little closer and a little more even because you're taking up more space. So yeah. sometimes it is also a little bit easier to start with that. And notice again, see how Tammy's loops are a little more open? That's actually a pretty good way to go. Okay, I'm being a little tight with what I'm doing, but I like that these are a little looser. When we pull this chain through the draw plate, it's going to even everything up. And sometimes a looser chain writes itself a little better than a, than tighter. a tighter chain. Okay. okay. So now what Tammy's going to do, show me, Tam, where you're going to uh, put your your next wire. So this is going to go, this is the part where they and go. And go a little oh. further out if you can. So I'm going to go, oh. I know. I know. This is the part where they go, I can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> I know. Yeah. So I'm going to go through this mm -hmm. one and and not, yeah. I'm You're trying gonna go to get through, it so I can. Through that one. Well, here. <laughs> You're like, wait a minute. It's too far away from okay. me. There you go. And it's going to come it is out here, guys. Closer. Yeah, it is. So she's going to go in there and she's going to come out through that one. Yeah, there you go. There we go. Perfect. And, and see, when gonna... she pulls it and she's not pulling it why it is tightly. This is where. This just a bit. Oh, sure. Oh, sorry. This way? Yep, there we go. Now I have my hand in the way, I'm sure. Well, it's okay. That'll do, it's more of an angle. That and see. there we go. And see there? And how you're not, how you, when you pull it around, you're not pulling it super, super tight. And see, I get more of my tightness mm -hmm. when I do it. And what you want to like do, that. as you're pulling, you guys, and I want to show you this, you don't want to pull this wire over the loop like this. You want that wire to always sit below so it doesn't bunch up. Okay. So it kind of looks like scales on Right, it's so it like does. It or it kind of looks like a fishbone braid. Mm -hmm. Remember mm -hmm. doing that? That's exactly what it looks like. Okay? Alright. So I'm going to um, I'm going to do some weaving like I mean it. Let me get back to where you guys can see me. And I'm going to show you because I'm almost done with my wire. So I need to loosen it up a little bit, Richburg. Loosen it up. There we go. And remember, if any of the chain that you're using or that you've done, like you start to make one and after you've finished, like the top portion doesn't look so great, it's no big. All you need to do, you'll just cut it away. So don't, don't stress. Don't stress on it. Okay. I'm almost done. And if, like right here, it looks a little kind of like, where am I going with this? All you need to do is aim through in the second step and out the second step. That's, you don't really even need to worry about the X or anything like that. All you need to do is, again, aim in. I'm getting to a really short piece of wire. I know. Somebody in, cut our wire I know. And whose idea out. was I that? I don't know. In that second step and out the second step with my little plier fingers here. Right? The wire's just going to naturally want to go. Okay? So now, all I'm going to do here is, with this little tail, I'm just going to kind of leave it like this. Okay? And... I'm going to get my other piece of wire. I don't know, well, where did I put it? Here it is. My other piece of wire. Now, just to add wire, you guys, it's no big deal. Check it. Check it, yo. I'm going to start in, so like I would have, you know, this is just another piece. I've, I've kind of let my wire come around here. I'm going to start like... I would have just made a loop, but I'm going to actually start it from the, going from the left to the right. So see this short tail? I poke it in there in the second step, and I bring that short tail around so that where I've ended and where I've begun kind of make a little X like that. See that? And see this loop? So I kind of put my thumb on there. It looks terrible, but it won't after I pull it through. Don't even worry. 
And see, that's, that's really, that's it. So see, I poked my wire through, brought it down, and now I'm just going to keep weaving. So here's my, these long pieces of wire, here's my X, or my little stair, I go through the second stair. And see how now, when I bring this weaving through, sometimes I just have to tell that little wire who's the boss. But as I come around on my second um, on my round there, I'm just going to cover it up and just weave right over it. So I'll show you what I mean here. And the other thing that you want to keep even, if you can, are your little steps here. That's the other thing that you're worried about keeping even. Because if your little, if the space in between your little ladder rungs are about even, your pulled chain is going to look fairly even. So see how here I want to pull it too tight. I just want to be super heavy handed, right? So I just want to loosen that bad boy up a little bit, right? There we go. Ginger says, my feet keep stalling, so the wire goes behind the loop and not through it? Yep, no, you never go through the loop. You go behind. So see, I've counted up two. One wire, two wires. There's that little space between. So it goes in between. Let, let me open that little space up. And if I'm going my second round with the double, uh -huh. I do the same thing, Yeah, right? just count up two. So yep. So I'm counting up one, counting up two. Goes through there and goes out through the second one on the opposite side. So we're never, ever going through the loop again. Never. And I'll come around. So this is where I'm getting to the part where I've added the wire. So see, I've counted up. There's my little end, so I'll make that one. Then I count up two. Goes out the second rung on the opposite side. And as I bring this around, See how my wire... And Art wants to know if you could add different colors. Yes, Art, you sure can. And I'll show you one. So see, there's my two little wires. I'm just going to keep weaving. Count up two, go out the second one. And as I pull this tight, this out of the way. See, there's that end, and there's that end. This end is a little long, so I'm going to clip that one away. So the end and the beginning kind of meet in the middle. And when you pull all this, these ends are going to be captured on the inside of the weave and you'll never ever know that they're there. You can also kind of cover them a little bit with your weave. Shara wants to know if you go through the loop when you add wire. Nope. You never ever ever ever, let me say it one more time, ever go through the loop except when you're establishing that first loop when you go through the loop of your daisy. Other than that, Never through the loop, always behind. And I'll add wire one more time for you guys to see. Okay. I'll let you add wire tomorrow. Will you, Tam? I will. That's the best gift I've had <laughs> all day. Oh, whoops. I was so excited that I skipped one. So there and there. So it gets to be kind of automatic, right? And if your wire's looking a little... Um, wrinkly. There we go. Just use your wire straightening tool, which I'm going to do now, to straighten everything out. This is a lot of fun. It's okay. very kind of zen. Super zen. Once you get there. So again, in, in one, out the other. And look at, my stuff isn't looking really even. It's okay, you guys. Take a deep breath. It's alright. How are we doing on time? Okay, good. We're doing alright. 
Because I could zen, zen this up all day. I know, day, I can see why right? I could do this for a while. Right. But I'm going to get at least an inch of wrapping here. So I'm going to go out and under. Oops, clear everything out. You can just start with, um, like if you were going to make this eventually in a fancier wire, like let's say sterling or gold filled or something like that, what you want to do is you want to start your wrap with some less dear wire like this copper or, you know, some of this plated wire or whatever. And then, um, then you'll add, once your pattern is, everything is established, you'll go ahead and add um, your sterling wire. There we go. Let me push that little end out of the way. So you can see, that's where I started and stopped. It's kind of underneath the weaving there, and it's going to be fine once we pull it through. Okay, I've got a couple of questions. Melanie wants to know, are we still on two? Yep, yeah, now we're always going to do two. We never go back to one. Um, so we always do two steps up. So step up one and step up two. I don't know if that applies to Mimi, uh, but you don't mm -hmm. have to do the double yes. No, and the, the, the weaving, and you'll see Mimi when I pull this through the draw plate, you'll see the difference between the single weave and the double weave. Okay. There is a pretty big, not a big, but there is a definite difference to how compact this wire is going. How you doing there, Tim? Good, I'm just trying to... The awl is really your friend mm -hmm. with this. this. Nice. Um, with this technique. Because it really does help you to make these little ladders Well, just to um, lift up even. the pieces that you... Yeah. So let's say, you guys, that you get yourself into a bind and you've woven and something is like super tight right there, right? And you're like, I just can't shove this wire underneath it. I just can't do it. Well, the cool thing about using this dowel is we can now, once everything is established, we can take this tape off and we can start sliding this guy up. So let's say that I was super tight, like right here, right? And I just couldn't get the wire underneath. I could slide this up and off the dowel. I could aim my wire so that I've got some room there to get my wire underneath. Then I can slide it back down on the dowel like that, right? And then you'll remind yourself to not be so tight. Also, if you're using these coated wires, like Tam is using the rose gold, if she's weaving it too tightly, she's going to scrape the coating off the top right? We don't want to scrape. See, I'm having trouble getting this through. We don't want to scrape that beautiful colored coating off. So you want to be a little looser, but you won't have that issue if you're not super tight. So any of these wires that are coated just have a light touch. Are we like ready to so add, some add some wire? For Hooray me. for don't me. Don't look at this other side. No, don't worry. I'm going to show you because I think uh, I did, I don't know what I did. I think well, it was take a little a look. loose there. That's all right. This side is beautiful. Yeah, that's the beautiful side. So see, this is a little close, but that's okay. We're going to just, we're going to keep going with it. But it there is very go. zen to do it. It is. And the more, like, I haven't made one of these, you guys, in, I don't know, probably 10 years, and I started picking it up again because I just love, love, love this technique. And the more you work at it, the faster and more even your pieces will get. All right, let's add some wire to Tammy's. Tam, I'm going to let you um, wire that one okay. that I have. There and you go. Um, show the pretty side. Show this side. And I'm also going to take off uh, the top of your tape because you don't want to weave all the way down the do dowel. At least I don't. Um, because you can weave super tight, and then it's really hard to get the dowel out of the middle of your weaving. So I have a tendency to kind of work, I just kind of push it off and kind of work in the top portion of this dowel. Okay, so that's what I, um, that's what, that's how I deal with it. So let's change wires and let's actually, for this one, since we wanted to see how colors change, let's change colors um, from the rose gold 
um, to the copper. Shall that was we? My husband yes, that was art making it. Let me see. I've got some copper here, and it'll be kind of subtle as we're weaving it, but you'll really be able to see it when we um, when we pull it. Okay. So, and the the push up method also is why you can do it on a real short dowel. Yeah, exactly. Plank, yeah. You don't need to yeah, you don't need to have the whole dowel. I like having this long dowel because it's easier to hang on to. But um, well, I was bracing it too. Yeah. Like this to, so and you can see here what Tammy was mentioning earlier, how her her rows are kind of sliding next to each other. Can you see that? Just get your chain nose plier and unslide them, okay? Move that one over a little bit, move that one over, and there you go. You've got a little more space. That'll work out just fine. So, <clears throat> if this is where we're ending our wire, we want to start our wire on this curve. So I'm going to poke my right wire down in. At the bottom, just you're fine, but just my okay? lower. Okay. I'm going to poke my wire here, um, right in the little second step. I'm going to curve this wire around so that the old wire and the new wires kind of cross. And let me cut away my extra. There we go. So see, it's really easy to see with these two different colored wires. Okay. And I'll just, let me turn this around so I've got my thumb on it. And then I'll just keep weaving with this long end of wire. So I'll bring it around so you can see where we've added. There's my new little, my new little stitch. So I'm just going to get this end. And we're going to act like nothing happened. So here's Here's the second step up in the second step and out the second step. And again, keep it loose. There we go. And we'll just keep going. In the second step, this step is a little tight, but I can see that that step is there. One and two, so that's step number one right there. So I'm going to go through step number two, in and out. And you're automatically, if you go in and out the same level of step, your loop is automatically going to do its thing. And how much wire would you say typically you use for bracelets? I don't know. A bit. I cut a ton of it. Yeah. I, every time I add, I add about a yard or so. So you definitely, I mean, one of these, the spool is 26 gauge and there's 30 yards on here. You would probably get at least two bracelets, I think, out of that 30 yards, depending on how long you make it. We're going to actually pull these pretty quickly now because we need to uh, assemble this into a bracelet. Okay. Uh, Kate, can you mix wire from one manufacturer to another if they are the same gauge? That's the sure. I I don't see why not. You do you, right? I don't think as long as it's all dead soft. All right. None of the wire that I'm using is half hard. It's all dead soft. So I think you'll be able to do it just fine. So see how here's where I change that wire up. So there's where the two little ends cross. So I'm just going to cover it up with another little round of weaving. And how many loops are possible to make for the weave? Can you make larger or smaller? Says Leanne. Uh, m more or fewer, you mean? Like more petals, Leanne? You could make as many petals as you want as long as it fit around the dowel, right? I would say that maybe eight or nine around, around, you know, you don't want it to be too tightly compacted. But this is Tammy's. This is seven, so, and it looks pretty good. I think usually I do five or seven, just depending. Even when it's a thinner um, chain, I like to make it pretty dense. So my petals are kind of shoved up against each other. Got a kind of a small little space there, but let me straighten out the tip of this wire. Do you have both wire straighteners over there? I do, probably. That's all right. 
taking yeah. a, yes, taking a cue from Emily, who <laughs> likes to take both of my tools. Um, I do the same. Uh, I go underneath that one, and see, you can see just where that second one is. And again, don't stress about it, because the magic is coming. Trust me. How's that one looking? Good, I'm almost out of wire again, so I'll hand it out back. Hooray! But you said gonna six, pull. so it doesn't necessarily have to be an odd number. No, it doesn't. Yeah, I think one of the samples had six. Yeah, yeah. And that's the one I'll probably pull through. Okay. So, actually, Tam, we're going to probably pull... Maybe we'll pull this one through. Okay. We'll, pull, we'll probably pull them all through is what we're going to do. Because I want to measure, because I want to show you guys how I start to think about how to figure out how much weaving equals how much... Um, how much length. See how Tammy's is nice and e yours is so much better. Mine is a mess. Yours looks good, Kate. Mm -hmm. Don't well, stress over it. Right, what did We're I just, just say? Practicing. What did I say? <laughs> right? <laughs> Not to stress. After you pull it. It's all right. 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 So let me just do a couple more rounds, you guys, and then we'll bring in our friend the draw plate. I do it till I can't even push it through anymore. <clears throat> yeah, I do too. One last thing. And see, there are those little ends, but it doesn't make any difference. I'm just going to count up two, one and two. The draw plate really takes care of a multitude of sins. Sometimes it's hard to I see. Take a break. Yeah, <laughs> it can be a little hard on your hands. All this weaving. There's that end. So if you can't quite get it, get your chain nose pliers. There you go. Let's bring it around. And then here's where we ended, we started and ended. I'm just going to come in and cut those tails away just a little bit more. Whoops, and the wire away. So it's a good time to end, I guess. <laughs> there we go. There you go. Um, well, that wasn't planned, but that's just fine. So let me measure and see what, what we have here. There it is a little less than an inch. What do I have on this one? It's about an inch. It's a little bit. And what do I have here on this one? That's about half an inch. So we're going to go ahead. I'm going to pull all of these off. So Bran, I'm going to hand you the camera back because we want kind of okay. a, a, a front view. So I'm going to hand you that one. And we'll go back right here. There we go. Let's see. Don't accuse me of taking okay. tools, I'm just organizing. Okay. Oh, That's right. Beautiful. There we go. So you can see, I have a piece that I've I've um, pulled through and we're gonna look at that piece in a second. Though actually, yeah, let me just set that aside real quick. So let me take off this big one, off this dowel here, this guy. And let's say, you know, you've strung, you've woven as much as you wanted to weave. For a bracelet like this length, let me open this up. Let me take all these little guys off so you can see it. The finished length of this guy, yeah, this is about four and a half inches. I had about a little less than maybe four inches of weaving. So you're weaving, but it also depends. There's a lot of things that your length depends on, okay? If you have your petals here, and you have more room in between, as you pull those petals through your draw plate, your petals, oops, let me go down here, elongate more and give you more length. Okay. Okay? If your petals are closer together as you're weaving, your petals don't elongate as much. 
Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So on mine that was seven, seven petals, it leaves less room in between. So it's going to... So it wouldn't lengthen as much. Lengthen as much. As much. Exactly. Okay. Does that make sense? So let's pull... I'm going to measure all of these, all of these that I've taken off here. And we're going to pull them through and see the length that we get. Okay? Because you really do kind of have to experiment to see. I'm like, this one's really tight. Yours are really loose. So it just depends. I would say if you wanted to make something that was about six inches, I would weave about five inches of weave. Um, weave about, an, yeah, about five inches or so because you're going to want to cut off some probably at the beginning anyway. Okay. Okay. So let me measure this. And can you pull it more than once? Like once you pull it, yeah, are you just done? Wait, no, just oh. you wait, Henry Higgins. Oh, there you go. Well, that makes sense. Then you be, can add to yeah. it. Okay. So here, well, you can't that. add, but you're going to... Once you pull, you can't add? No, you can't. But oh. you can stretch, but you can keep stretching. Oh, you can make pull it smaller mm -hmm. and smaller, like pasta. So this is a half an inch, exactly. This is about a, about, eh, a little less than... I'm going to say the usable part is about a half an inch. And this is about a half an inch. So they're so all about the same length. Like, about, that's good. about the same. Okay. So now this is a draw plate here. Okay. And the draw plate is what we use to elongate and pull our piece through to tighten it all up. So you can see here is before we pull and after we pull. Okay. Yeah. And the way we do that is we use a draw plate. So. I begin, there's still some tape, I use cellophane tape on this, if I can get the cellophane tape off. Can I have the wire cutter please? It's kind you of hot on there. I'm going to use this wire cutter to cut my cello tape. So now with my fingers I'm going to smoosh this down a little bit and I'm just going to pull this through. I just need to kind of rotate and pull, kind of taper that end, so when I put it through the biggest hole of the draw plate, it'll kind of start, have okay. a starter. Okay. So may I have the chain nose? So you can see here's my little bundle in the back, here's my chain in the front. Okay. So now I'm grabbing onto this end and I'm pulling I might need to push it down. See with my tight weave. Okay. Push down a little bit more with your fingers if it doesn't quite go. The tight weave I think looks there nice we go. when it's done though. Right? See that? I just pulled that through. Now I'm going to pull it through one more time. Now, you can see if you can, yeah, it actually does look pretty good, mm -hmm. right? It's nice and even and tight. But I still have it's a little hard for you guys to see, but I want you to be able to see it. This, these are my loops here, right? When I went this little row is this little row. Okay. And see there are the little ladder steps. See how they curve down? That's this. Okay, and that's where you were saying if there's less space in mm -hmm. between. Okay. It's going to compact, it's going to be a little more compact chain, but if you have fewer petals with more space in between, it's going to be, you can see this one that I'm holding. You can see really the difference. It's a lighter weave and you can make it longer. Yeah, Okay. right, and it's a little, you can see that the weave here in the loops and the loops here, see how that's looser and that's tighter? Mm -hmm. It's just, and it really is also kind of the style that you are Whatever weaving. You like. So I'm going to pop it up. I'm going to make it a little more compact. I'm going to go to the second hole. I'm going to grab it, and we're going to pull it through. I really need to yank it, so bear with me here. There it goes. And that, I think, is the size that I would do for this one. Because see how nice and compact it is? That's pretty. It really looks good. Okay. It just so looks so intricate one, when you... Right, when you pull it through it, there. Yeah. And this gives me it elongated a little less than a half an inch. 
And I think it was Mimi or maybe it was Jackie who was asking, see how here this was the single loop? Can you see how it's a little more open? Oh, yeah. And that's the double. Oh, I do like the double. And can you I see like how... I like the single when we had it on the dowel. Right. I like that it a little bit better. It was easy to do. But, but it the is, double looks beautiful. Yeah, it is a little more open. And can you see how I went from the copper to the rose gold here? It's kind of hard to see. It's subtle. But this yeah. is the copper. Oh, okay. That's rose gold. Okay. So let's pull the next one through. This one's the real big one on that half-inch dowel. I think this was yours, Tam, that you were I doing. I think so. So again, if with it our has fingers, seven, that's me. See, and it's easier to kind of compact down a little bit because yours is a little of the space open, in between. right? Right. Because see, right here, this piece right here, I can see that being a bead cap or a. Yeah, I mean, you could. You just could stop, like that. You could stop right here. Twist that off. Do something right? with the end. You and could tassel clever, topper. Clever you are, right? We could just shape this up a little bit. Yeah, I like that. And we piece. could call that a top. It'd be awesome. I like that. But let's go ahead and run it through. Since yours is nice and loose, I can probably almost get it through with my fingers. Get a little tighter there. There we go. And see that? Oh. See the difference between that being so tight and yours being nice and loose? Oh, I see. Even better. Okay. And we do have the draw plates, you guys. We sure, sure do. So I'm going to go through one more time. And then let's go up. Sorry, I'm trying to make sure that you guys can see it. I'm there just trying go. to stay out of your way so nope. I get it. And see that? See how the weave is a little different? It's a little more elongated. You've got a few more. It's looking a little more like what I've got there. Mm -hmm. So let's bring it down one more because we want to make it fit through the cap, right? So I'm going to tighten that up and then we'll go through this one. That's amazing what just pulling it through the yeah. plate Yeah, and does. see, now I can just do it with my hands because yours mm -hmm. is nice and loose. And I'm going to go through the final one. I'm going to go up here. Now, you can see this was a half inch, right? Mm -hmm. Let's measure. The usable portion is about an inch. So for about every half inch you weave, you gain about a half, half inch. inch. Ish. Right. Depending on your weave. Right? Let's do this last one, shall we? Because okay. pulling through is so fun. And that was the six petal one, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. I think. This was the uh this was the five petal. This was the six petal I was working on earlier. Oh okay. This was your seven petal and this was my five petal that I started. Oh, okay. So see again, smush it down. Smush it round. Let's get it through the draw plate. Yeah, I'm going to use that as a bead cap, I can tell already. There we go. Yeah, that six weave one, I was way too tight. That one wasn't, that was not successful. I mean, it was fine. It was fine. Well, that's part of the learning process. I know when I was learning to crochet with yarn, that was the thing my grandma would, she would be right over my shoulder, and either I was making it so yeah, tight, so I tight. couldn't get yeah. the, the hook through, or mm -hmm. it was so loose you could put your whole hand right, through it. Right, so, it. exactly. You've got to regulate that tension. she'd go, let tension. go of that, let right. go of that yarn, let go of that yarn. It's not a lifeline. And yeah. like when you say don't have a death grip on it, right. that always reminds me of that. There's our final one here like this. Okay. So for this size bead cap, I go through to this last one right here. Okay. Okay. So and you can really also really see kind of the single weave that I had going on here. Okay. Oh, yeah. That is so pretty. It just looks so mm -hmm. intricate when it's mm -hmm. done. Mm -hmm. Love so, that. And yes, we do. We carry all the draw plates. All the draw plates for you. Um, but again, you could make your own. But it's they're not very expensive. They're nice and easy to hold on to. Mm -hmm. So I even thought about if I wanted larger holes that so I'd get my drill. I could drill more holes into this thing. I've got room. Oh, yeah. Right? So I could adapt it to my needs. So now let's clean these up and say, say that we wanted to make a, a connection with this one because we need to close this up. We're going to go over a little bit, you guys, today, but that's just how it is. All you need to do is simply 
clip this away. So I'm going to get my wire cutters and I'm going to clip. Don't be afraid that it's all going to come apart. It's not. You're going to lose a few little links there. But see, there's your little there's your little end. There's that one. That's ready. That's ready to go. And I'll cut that little end away. So however long this component would be. And let's do this one. Now if you wanted to, I guess I should add, when you run that through your bead cap then, do you add another piece of wire to make? I okay. You read my mind. We're going to do that next. So see here, you just, just find a place that looks about right and clip it. I'm going to clip it all the way across. And since this is all woven, it's not going to unweave or anything. It's all, you want to get rid of all those little bits. Lorraine is curious if you've ever used the smallest hole on the draw plate. I haven't. I have not. Though, I've made chain that's pretty thin. Oh my thin. gosh, that is tiny. It's pretty tiny, yeah. yeah. But I've made these really thin. And the secret to that is like seven or eight petals on a super skinny dowel. Oh, okay. And it looks amazing. Really amazing. I think I gave that. I, you know how it is. You make things, you give them away. Get out of there, little bits of wire. And see, when the I boss. do the wire crochet, I leave the all the wires on, and that's what I twist mm -hmm. to make my loop. Oh, to make your loop, mm -hmm. you could do that. Yeah, but since we're going to do a bead cap on this, yeah, I'm going to clip everything away. Well, so, on mine, you I have it at both ends, and you wouldn't ends. have it here. Right. So. so here's all of our little waste. I'm going to get rid of that. So now it's time to create and make some little components. So there's my bead cap. I start with, I'm going to get some 22 gauge wire. Okay, here's my 22 gauge. And I use 22 because I like things to be a little bit heftier. Okay, and um, so it holds really well. Uh, I see that there's a question about the bracelet that I'm wearing. I think this is 22, you guys. I think that's what this is, my big heavy one. But I'm telling you. Oh, and it's right here. I did this with 20. What did I do? I did this one with 22. Should we just pull this one yeah, through? Yeah, let's pull, let's that pull this one. through. I forgot I did I'm this one. I'm anxious to see what that looks um, like. I forgot all about it. Um, don't. I'm telling you. You'll come back to me and go, I started with 22, Kate, and you were right. I should have never done it. Start with 26. Just, I can't tell you. It's much more malleable. Then, once you understand this process, then you can go up, graduate yourself up. Okay. I think Janice is also curious about what size hole you used for the bracelet. This one? Oh, I don't know. This is probably on a drop. Uh, probably the biggest hole is my guess. I don't know. I mean, you really, I'm going to put this through the biggest one on the draw plate, and we'll see what it looks like. Um, and that's why it's always good to weave little um, samplers like this, too, mm -hmm. you know, so you can kind of see what works for you. So I'm going to bend that end around. And again, Tammy, you're talking. I know you're like, don't give me that as a bead cap. <laughs> give it to me. But you can see a heavier gauge like What's this 22 gauge. Squish? Look at how nice but that would yeah, be as a cap. Mm -hmm. So just kind of, Big that's tassel. why you want it to be like a dead soft wire. So see, I'm working it around. So I've got that taper. Okay, just like that. Then I get my draw plate. It's going to be a little tougher to do. I've really got to get this down a little bit more. So let me let me do that. And of course, if I had a big long chain, I would only do this probably to the beginning part like this, right? So I'm putting it through. Let me see if I can get this through there. Well, as you're doing it, you just do it to the beginning, and as you pull it through, it kind of follows. It'll collapse, yeah. Okay. It should. So you don't have to do the whole thing. Mm -mm. Okay. So can I have the, yeah, those guys, the nylon jaw? Let me really. It's a lot harder with the it 22, It is, with the 22. It? That's why I'm telling you. I was showing off, right? Pride goeth before a fall. This but they're all talking components. So. Okay, good thing. No one's watching me, right? No one's paying any no attention. No one's listening, Kate. Good thing. I actually might, for this size, 
I actually might put a bigger hole in this dowel. Oh, okay. Maybe. It would be hard to compress it, I think. And roll it up. Yeah, and I could put the draw plate in the vise. This 22 gauge, this had um, five petals, I think, is what I did. But I just need to have it get a start to go through that hole. So this may have been, yeah, this was 22. It's probably why I don't do many 22s, <laughs> because they're kind of a pain. I'm going to help hold that. No, I really just want to get this tighter. I think what I need to do, and maybe I'll address this one on Friday, because on Free Tip Friday, that's when we're going to talk about liver of sulfuring and stuff patina. as well, and patina. I would probably put one whole sizer uh, bigger than this in this draw plate, because it's, it's a little heavy to try and pull mm -hmm. through. If I had it in a vise, I could really just pull... And if you weren't worried time. about knocking yeah, it, knock it. Us out. Yeah, so I will revisit this one on Friday, you guys, okay? So I'm going to put that aside for the moment. And, and unless um, Tammy swipes it as yeah, a cap. I'm, I may. Because look at how nice. You could just really just do that with your hands. And mm -hmm. look at, it's a beautiful, beautiful piece. But I'm going to put that aside for the moment. We'll revisit that on Friday. I'll um, I will try get my drill it. bit. What's that? I'll try not to steal, to steal it. it. Right. I'll get my drill bit and drill um, a little bit of a larger hole in here, and we'll do that on Free Tip Friday. Uh, so let me get back to this. <laughs> so I had my 22 gauge wire here, and I'm going to poke that 22 uh, kind of down a row or two. So I've got this. And you don't have to make it beautiful. You just have to make it tight. So I'm going to come in. I've got a long end and a short end. I'm going to kind of clamp it here in my chain nose. And I'm just going to wrap this around once, once or twice, so it's closed. Okay? I'm going to cut away my extra. And I'm going to tap that down. And I'm going to get... Um, a contrasting cap so you can see it. I put my cap on and the weave nestles right inside the cap. Okay. That finishes that off so nicely. So nicely. I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Where's my 22 gauge? I'm going to leave this undone for the moment and I'll put it through this side and just find a place just if you've got a little bit sticking up above bend you can do this with your fingers wrap the short piece it might be a little bit easier with my tool wrap the short piece around the long piece whoops you get really clamp that with my tool there we go so it's nice and tight it's not going to come off Again, it just needs to be sturdy. It doesn't need to be super pretty. Tap, tap that in just a little bit. And we'll get our cap. Gina says you could run soft flex down the center, add a cap on the other end, and then string beads. You could. I would, instead of running the soft flex in there, I would just use this maybe as, as a, connector. a connector maybe but That's you nice. could put soft flex mm -hmm. i love this as a connector so here's my little my little um mini hoop so i'm going to add the mini hoop let's bend at a right angle uh oh i need my round nose but soft flex would also work jp you could poke um soft flex or you know what i might do if you're going to use soft flex I might put soft flex down the center before I pull it through the draw plate. I might try that. Oh, yeah, there so you go. So that the draw so plate, is, so the soft yeah. flex is inside it, maybe? Um, I don't know. That might work. I've made my little loop. Let's slide on our your friend and mine, the mini hoop. Grab that loop. That mini hoop comes in handy. Isn't it? God, I just love this component. And we have it in all three flavors. And I used it, we also used it in the new prairie design. Clip that away and kind of, you know, 
detail it so it looks nice in there. And let's do, if I were going to do, let's say, the closure portion, if the um, clasp was going to go on this end, I'd bring just the same around before I wire wrap it closed. I'll get me clasp. I don't know how many times I've done that. Wire, do, do you a get beautiful, so excited. Yes, do a beautiful wrap and then go, oh. Then go, oh, wah, wah. Need a jump ring now. Oh, yeah. There we go. Let's close that up nicely. We'll wrap it. There we go. Clip away my excess. So now, let's do a bead there, shall we? And I think what we'll do is we'll finish it with a length of chain. Because why not? Because we only have a short piece of Viking knit, right? That's pretty, though. And I can see doing smaller pieces of that and doing something decorative in between and having it be... For sure. Have it be just like component, mm -hmm. right? Like I could then wire wrap this one. I could do this one. Right. This would also make a great earring. Uh-huh. Right? Mm -hmm. Nanny said a great earring. I um, could somebody attach... Somebody else suggested putting it in the bib component. Oh, I love mm -hmm. that bib component. Mm -hmm. You know I do. I do. I that do would know. be great dangles, too. But yeah. all of these, you don't have to weave a whole darn necklace in order for you to... Have fun with the Viking knit, you know? You can just... Let's attach this bead. So I'm going to go here. And go around. I need to make sure that the loop I make is large enough so it moves around the hoop without it being super gigantic. Let's wrap this around. And then, there we go, clip away that extra, poke that little end in so it's nice and flush, and let me get my bead. There's my bead. Now I also have, before I go too much further, I have this little component that I've made here. And let me wrap another one so you guys can see how I add it. I did it so it acted kind of like a little slider. I like that. Okay. So the way I did that was, it's pretty easy. And I, well, I like how you could take it on and off because mm -hmm. then you can change them out or exactly. add extra ones. or. Where's my 22 gauge? There's the rose gold. Janice is saying she'd be afraid the coating would possibly kink and crack. I don't know, JP. I don't think it would because uh, you're not drawing the draw plate down too tight around the soft flex. Um, you could also try poking it down the center, but it might be a little hard to poke through. If it's closed, but this actually looks pretty open. Could you do it with See a needle? See that hole down there? You probably oh, yeah. Could. It's pretty big. I think the you could opening. put it through there. So maybe you could put it through after the fact. The opening here, and let me see, I can put it through the all. Yeah, see, I can get the all mm -hmm. right through there. Mm -hmm. So if I can get the all through there, I can certainly get soft flex through there. And if it was a fine. big enough opening, could you put soft flex through with beads already on it? Oh, to, to maybe like have, have the bead beads show. in center in the yeah, middle. Yeah, you could. It might be, you might have to draw this down so it's a little bit bigger in diameter. Okay. But um, because that first one, it might still be a little tight for it. But okay. you could certainly experiment with that. I think it's a good idea. So to make that little hanger before we go to the chain portion of this, I'm going to bend just like we do. I'm going to make my loop. And I'm going to add my charm. Now, what I do here is, because I want the neck of this charm to be a little thicker, 
So what I do is I come in and I give myself about three little wraps. One, two, that's about three right there. And I'm going to cut away this extra. Is that a known design? It is. Okay, it's, it's one beautiful. of our new ones. Yeah, with the very, lotus. Very, very pretty. Isn't it pretty? Push that little end in. Now, I need something. That's not pushed in. Let me try this again. I need something to go around to form the size of my of my slider. And I think since I had this pencil around me, and it looked like about the right size, but this is a good use of a knitting needle or a smaller oh, dowel yeah. as well. So see how I'm going around that pencil? I'm going around that pencil once and twice. I like that. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to wrap over this initial wire wrapping so it's nice and heavy and visually it looks like a match. I can take that out of the pencil now. There we go. I'm just going to cut away the extra. And push that down. But I made a nice little, make sure everything's lined up properly. Let's get this loop. Tell this loop where to sit nicely. That's the wrong way. There we go. That's the right way. Now I can slide it on. Did I... Can I get it on there? Did I make it too small? I should have put it on before I put the bead on, huh? Let me see if I can elongate this just a little, if I can get the end of that clasp in there. There we go. And this just slides right on. Okay. I like that. So then... I'll just do this loop. I'll put my chain in. This is our keyholes chain. We don't have it on the materials list. I just grabbed it as kind of a extra here. But any of our chain will work. I think if you want something a little bit heavier, this keyholes is a nice one for it. I like it. that chain a I, lot. I do too. And I want to make sure, oh, I need to cut it here. I want to make sure when I'm cutting it that I'm not leaving a sharp end. So I'm going to use my Zeron cutters to kind of cut that link away. And you'd be able to see it if you were right here in front of me holding this chain. There we go. But you can see if I free it up, I've got a nice clean link right there. So now that link is going to go. Oh my gosh, I'm going long today. But that's. How it goes with Viking Knit, Tam. That's what happens. Well, you showed a lot of things there, I have. Too, so. We've done a lot. And now I'm just going to wire wrap it closed. Okay. There's a, some possibilities with the Viking. There is. I'm a fan. I'm glad. I'm a fan, I too. A fan. So now we're just going to measure. May I use your wrist? Mm-hmm. I'll just bring it around here. I need probably about like that much. That looks good. So what I'll do is I'm going to clip this chain away. And then I can do a wire wrap or a jump ring or whatever it is I want to do to close that up. I think... I'll you use. could use one of these in, uh, like, the copper. Does that... Hold it back. It doesn't quite uh, fit. That's too bad. But I could also use, like I did on... Where is it? I could do just a little mm -hmm. wire wrap here at the end. Do what's... That makes a nice closure, I think. Yeah, we might as well or just connector. close it up, right? So we do that little wire wrap, just like I did, pretty much. It's the same thing as that connector is. Just 
slide this in. Whoops. Come on, chain. Do what I tell you. But again, you could also put like a heavy jump ring or something mm -hmm. on the end. We've got a lot of different jump rings, a lot of different things, but I like showing a little wire. And this, you could have a smaller bead, you know, whatever. You, you do you. I could also do two strands of this chain if I felt like two strands might look cool mm -hmm. or if it's thinner chain or whatever. So then I'll just make one more loop on this side. What I did was I went up and over and I went around twice here so it was a nice ending loop. And then I wire wrapped over everything. So it hid, just like I did on that slider, it hid the connection. I'll clip away this extra, poke it in so it's not sticking out, straighten everything out, and yes! There you go. Look at that. That's pretty. It's not bad, right? And it gives it a little extra air. Um, I like the texture that the Viking gives it. Yeah. For sure. Right? This guy isn't on there, but I'm going to put that separate. And then I've got this one with the copper. So, you know, never fear. You don't have to jump in with a whole giant piece of Viking knit, you know, to kind of test out this technique. I think it's cool. Woo! You guys, we did it. We did it. Let's move that camera back, I'll Aldrin. I'll to that. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Thanks, JP. We're all set. Thank you so much. I know we went over. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Viking knit gets so intricate. Thank you, though. Woo! I'm going to need good. a nap after that. That was a good one. See, we need the wine that it was my mom fun. said. That's right. Yeah, because your mom said we should be like Kathy Lee and Hoda. And just have our wine. And have our wine. Maybe next time. Well, I still have coffee. It is afternoon, <laughs> so it's good. Um, well, you guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I enjoyed it. That was you good. You did a great job. And look at your, Thank you. your wrap. Was, it looks great. I think I used... Which one did I use? Or yours is right here. Well, you'll keep going. Yeah. You'll keep going I will. I will. I will definitely do it again. And like I said, it looks so intricate, I was a little bit worried. Yeah. But it is very zen once you get into it, so I would mm -hmm. highly recommend it. Mm -hmm. Highly recommend mm -hmm. it. Um, Janice, I don't know about Viking Knit and Soft Flex. I would have to check that out. I think it might be a little buoyant, but you could, you could try it. Maybe I'll try it and see if we can Viking Knit with it. Um, it was fun. Oh. And uh, we did mm -hmm. get comments on both your rings. Oh, so oh, um, that thanks. might be something that you want to mention. Yeah, this was a little. Uh, uh, what did I do? I enameled this piece, mm -hmm. and that piece you did in one of my classes. I did. I took a class. That's a Kate Richburg yeah. class. Yeah. You did a great I job. I get compliments on it all the time. Yeah. I was so proud of myself for making a ring. That I was thought your I would first never, ring, right? It was. Yeah. It was. It's gorgeous. I thought I would never gorgeous. make a ring. We'll put, them, we'll put them right there. We'll look here and do a little Yeah, zoom. a little zoom in. Little zoom in. So we have had the joy of seeing it as you've been working. That's right. <laughs> yes. That's All right. right. So you guys, we of course, as always, we have a great giveaway. And we have some other little things for you here. So I also have some tips that I'm going to share with Drea. Drea will encapsulate all of this into episode notes, so watch for the episode notes for all of these steps on Monday. She um, does an amazing job. Yeah, she on does those. a great job. Our they Drea. really help a lot. And then on Friday, I'm going to revisit this 22 gauge on Free Tip Friday, and we're also going to talk about how to antique this bear copper on Free Tip Friday because it's a whole other ball game when you want to antique. Okay. So um, I've got uh, a couple of things, Tam. We've got uh, a giveaway. Okay. Today we've got a little raffle for our giveaway. And when you are placing order, if you place an order today, and it's about it's about 
1220. I went long today, you guys. Um, uh, so we're going to go for about an hour after the broadcast. I have four little things, and I've got three raffle prizes for you. So this if you uh, place an order, today is the 25th of April, and oh it's gosh. about 12. I know. How did it get to be that? It's April it's already. It's going too fast. It's crazy. Uh, it's about 12... 20 Pacific time if you're watching this live. Uh, for the next hour, if you make an order of any size and you put I Heart Viking Knit, I'm going to throw in. we do. We do. I've made three <laughs> little, you're, you're um, going to be entered in a drawing to win one of three prizes. And I made little uh, dowel sets and they're all four sizes. Since we're doing a lot of measuring, I've thrown in some handy tape. And I've thrown in the 26 gauge silver plated, or the rose gold over um, the fine silver uh, wire. And we have it all in our very coveted bead shop oh, tote bags, yeah. right? So we're gonna throw, and so I've got, um, we'll throw your name in the drawing for one of these three prizes. So you put um, I Heart Viking Knit in your order notes between now and about 1.20. We also today have given 25% uh, off all of our wire. So as oh, you're shopping, nice. if you use the coupon code VIKING25, all of our wire, including our para wire, um, is 25% off. That's Very my nice. story. I'm sticking to it. And that ends tonight at midnight, midnight right? Wednesday, okay. uh, the 25th of April. So that's it, you guys. We've got it all here. Thank you so much for sticking around for this extra special, extra long edition of Facebook Live. It was good. You taught you taught a lot. Of we taught. A, we were we ambitious. Did. We were ambitious. Tam, thanks you so so much for being my Thank wing you. woman. For Thank this you episode. for asking me. It was great. I really enjoyed it. We'll go ahead and share um, your link to your Insta and your beautiful jewelry photos okay. in our episode notes. Very good. And Thank I'll see you, you Friday um, for Free Tip Friday when we wrap all of this up with some antiquing and we'll deal with that 22 gauge wire. And next Wednesday, you guys, Janice will be here for a really great Facebook Live. We have a new wrap bracelet that she's done. Yay, Janice. And it's incredible. It's incredible. I can't wait so, to see that. Yes. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Brandwin, for that camera work. I know that getting up close and personal wasn't as easy, <laughs> but we did a great job. All right, you guys. See you soon. Thanks for joining me. Thank and you. I'll see you on Friday. <laughs>